Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about how the Grignard reagent reacts with nitriles, giving us a ketone. While normally we are used to thinking about the Grignard reaction giving us alcohols, this is one of those few reactions that can give us a ketone, and it is a very powerful synthetic tool. So without any further ado, let's jump into the mechanism of this reaction and see how it actually works. So I am going to start with a nitrile, and I am going to react my nitrile with the methyl magnesium bromide, the Grignard reagent. As we know, the Grignard reagents, they are extremely powerful nucleophiles, which means that they can quite easily react with the nitrile by attacking the carbon of our nitrile and pushing the electrons towards the nitrogen. As a result of this interaction, we are going to end up making a new bond right over here, and we also have a negative charge on our nitrogen atom. And while Grignard reagents can be very good nucleophiles, they are not strong enough to tackle anything that is already negatively charged, which means that as soon as we form our negatively charged intermediate, our Grignard reagent will not be able to attack it again, which means that we can go right away into our workup. And as with any Grignard reagent, the workup is just going to be some sort of aqueous acid, which in this case is going to take our negatively charged nitrogen and protonate that, bringing it to a neutral state. This gives us the following intermediate, and since we have a C and double bond over here, the functional group here is going to be an amine. However, we are still working in aqueous acidic conditions, and unfortunately amines are incredibly easy to hydrolyze, which means that isolating this amine intermediate is going to be pretty much impossible. So what's going to happen next? We are going to bring another equivalent of our acid, H3O+, and now I'm going to protonate my nitrogen one more time, like so, which is going to give me a positively charged aminium intermediate here, looking like this. And what we have now is this positively charged aminium intermediate, and these guys are fairly electrophilic, which means that if we have a nucleophile around, and we do, which is just water, we can have an easy reaction between our aminium intermediate and water molecule. So I'm going to show my water molecule here, which is going to be doing the nucleophilic attack on my aminium intermediate, and from this point that is just going to be an amine hydrolysis mechanism. We are first going to form a protonated tetrahedral intermediate looking like this. In this case, we'll need to get rid of the proton from the oxygen and put a proton on the nitrogen to make it into a good living group. So I'm going to combine two steps in one. I will show water coming in and deprotonating my intermediate, and at the same time I'm going to show the nitrogen being protonated by my acid floating around. And as I've mentioned, although I'm showing it all in one step, of course it's going to be two separate steps. We're going to have deprotonation first, and then we're going to reprotonate our intermediate to have plus on the nitrogen. And as I have already pointed out in my videos quite a few times, it might be very tempting to do the intramolecular proton transfer like so, but that is not a correct error movement, that it doesn't actually happen intramolecularly like that, although this is a very common shortcut. So if your instructor uses this shortcut, remember, it is most likely not going to be okay outside of your classroom. So it is better to do this step with two separate steps, one where we are deprotonating our molecule with water, and another one when we are reprotonating our molecule with an acid, rather than doing it intramolecularly. But coming back to my intermediate with the positively charged nitrogen, this part of the molecule now is an excellent living group. And because it is a living group, we can have pushed that group out, so we are going to have our electron movement happening like so, giving us the following protonated intermediate, and of course we are going to have our NH3 that we have just lost as our living group. And since NH3 is a base, it's going to come in and immediately snatch that proton that we have on our molecule, giving us our ketone as the final product. So, as you can see, the actual Grignard reaction here is pretty simple, it is just a single nucleophilic attack on our nitrile from the Grignard reagent, giving us a negatively charged intermediate, and the rest of this long mechanism is just essentially an amine hydrolysis that leads us towards the formation of the final product, 
which as I've mentioned is our ketone. Now, of course, working through the mechanism every single time is going to be quite tedious, so you can use a shortcut to easily visualize the product without having to go through every single step of the mechanism here. For instance, let's say we are working with this nitrile and we are trying to do our reaction with ethyl magnesium bromide. In order to easily visualize my product, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to first redraw my nitrile. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons, including the carbon of the CN. So we'll just redraw that part. I will also redraw my Grignard reagent with the magnesium bromide over here, like so. Now, next, I'm going to get rid of the nitrogen. In the final product, we do not have any nitrogen, so I'm going to get rid of that completely as well. And I know that the final product is going to be a carbonyl, so I'm going to stick the CO double bond right there on my carbon of what used to be a nitrile. Next, I'm going to pay attention to my Grignard reagent. In this case, I see that I have two carbons in that Grignard reagent, so that means that I'm going to be adding a two carbon chain to my kind of half formed carbonyl over here. So what I'm going to do here, I will just erase my magnesium bromide, I will erase the bond that used to connect my magnesium bromide uh, to you know, the rest of my chain, and I'm going to make a bond between carbon and the rest of my what used to be a Grignard reagent. So this way, if I redraw my molecule nicely now, I have one, two, three, four, five carbons with a carbonyl, then two more carbons. So one, two, three, four, five carbons. I have my carbonyl over here and then two more carbons. And that is my product. Pretty easy, right? So if I look at a few more examples here, let's say we're going to start with the nitrile of the benzoic acid and we are going to react it with butyl magnesium bromide followed by our usual acidic workup. Well, in this case, to easily visualize my product, I'm going to redraw this part of my starting material, ignoring the nitrogen. So that part is going to look like, so I have the phenyl group, I have the carbon, then I'm going to add my carbonyl to that, and then the last bit here is going to add my four carbon chain, starting with the carbon where it was attached to my magnesium. So I have one, two, three, four carbons over here. So if I number my carbons, I have carbon one, two, three, and four in the starting material, and those carbons are one, two, three, and four right here, and that is my product. Or let's say we have the following nitrile, and we are reacting that with methyl magnesium bromide, followed by the acidic workup, of course. Now, again, in this case, I'm going to redraw my molecule all the way up to the carbon of the nitrile, which is going to look the following. So I have one, two, three, four carbons, I have my OCH3 over here, and then I have this carbon of the nitrile, then I'm going to make that into a carbonyl, and for my Grignard reagent, I only have one carbon, just the methyl group, so I'm just going to add this methyl group over here, and that's my product. And let's do just one more example. I'm going to have the following nitrile, and I'm going to react it with isopropyl magnesium bromide, with, of course, the uh, corresponding workup at the end. So, like before, I am going to start by redrawing my molecule with all the carbons, including the carbon of nitrile, but ignoring our nitrogen. So, in this case, that is going to be a structure looking like this. So, I have this carbon. I am going to add my carbonyl to that. And then, for my Grignard reagent, I have this part of the molecule over here, connecting by that carbon to my carbonyl, so I'm going to add this isopropyl to my carbonyl, and there we get it. So, as you can see, the reaction of nitriles with the Grignard reagent is a fairly simple reaction, although it does have a little bit of an intimidating mechanism. It is also a very powerful synthetic tool to make ketones in your multi-step synthesis, so that is definitely something that you need to keep in mind when thinking about multi-step synthesis for your homework or exam. And if you want to learn more about the other reactions of the Grignard reagent and how to make it, Check out this video next.